Luke chapter 8. A subject that I have never spoke on before. But on my knees at home I asked the Lord to give me something. And that's what he gave me. Luke chapter 8 and verse 1. And it came to pass afterwards that he went through out every city and village, preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God, and the twelves were with him. Now, just a moment there, the he, that is the Lord Jesus Christ himself, the very son of God, that we celebrate at Christmas, the little child. He grew up, he is a man, and he is trying to reach souls. The he is the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse two, and a certain woman, and certain women which had been healed of, of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Madeline, out of whom seven devils, and Jonah, the wife of Kiza, uh, Herod Stewart, and Susanna, and many others which ministered unto him of their substance. And when much people were gathered together and were come to him, out of every city he spake a parable. Now, we, before we go on, I want to re, remind you, Mary Madeline, a sinner, the devil, seven devils within her, and yet the Lord Jesus Christ saved her soul, and she's a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have Joanna, a sinner, follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, and, and so on. And many here tonight, sinners, but followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, tonight I want to speak about four categories of people. And you are, you are in one of those. So we'll read at verse five. A sower went out to sow his seed. And as he sowed, some, some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it. Now, a sower, we're looking back years ago, early, or late 1800s, a man, a farmer, would go out with a big pouch on his side, and hoping for a, a, a windy day, and he would take handful, and he would throw it in the air, and the seed would be falling everywhere. The wind would take them, and he would spread the seed. And this is a picture of what I want to talk to you tonight about. The picture is this, the Lord Jesus Christ he went to all the cities and the villages preaching the gospel. Now we got to remember there that as he was going along, some followed, some followed, some stayed behind, some stayed behind. As the one that followed, they had an ear for the Lord Jesus Christ, what he was saying. So hopefully tonight what we have, me and my brother David, what we have is something that you are looking for. Verse 6, and some fell on rocky on rocks, and as soon as it was sprung, up it withered away because of lack of moisture, lack of nourishment. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. And others fell on good grounds and sprang up and bare fruit and a hundredfold 
And when he had said these things, he cried. He said, he that has an ear, let him hear. He that has an ear, let him hear. In this world today, it's a godless world. Remembering in my younger age, when we met a man of God on the street, we bowed. We, we had reverence for that man. He was a man of God. As far as we knew, he was a man of God. There was reverence for God. Today, there isn't. So tonight, if you're here tonight and you're not saved, you've never received the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, count it a privilege for you to be here tonight to hear the Word of God. Now, number five, the sower, uh, the sower went to sow his seed. And when he sowed, some fell on the wayside. So look, now we go to um, verse 12. Verse 12. Those by the wayside are they that hear. When cometh the devil and take away the word out of their heart. Lest they should believe and be saved. The devil is real, my friend. He's as real as you are sitting in that seat tonight. He's as real as that. The devil is there to, ro to rob God of the, the precious word of God that you can hear tonight. Many of you have heard the gospel. Goes into one ear and out the other. And out the door you go. A little story before I go on. I heard the gospel one night. I had no interest of being there at all. I didn't even know where I was going. I wasn't tricked. But I went. But didn't know what was a gospel meeting. But here is something, and I had, I was evil. I had sin coming out of me like you wouldn't believe. I was a sinner condemned going to hell. But I heard something that night. I heard that I needed to be born again if I ever was going to be in heaven. I had never heard that before in my life. We will go on, we will, we, we will explain in a few minutes what is all about being born again. So verse 6, some fell on the rocks, and as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because there was lack of moisture. Go down to verse 13. They on the rocks are they which when they hear received the word with joy and these uh, and these have no root which for a while believe and a little time of temptation fall away now if you're not safe tonight and you have come to these gospel meetings and you have come again and again the word of God is entering your mind. But as soon as you leave, something takes it away. It's the world. The world is full of things that is not of God. The world is, pl there's plenty in the world to take any sinners down to the pit of hell. Even if he's heard the gospel all his life. It's the decision that you will make tonight before you leave this room. Verse 7, some fell among the thorns, and the thorn sprang up with, its, with it and choked it. So now we go to verse 14. 
and that which fell among the thorn, they which when they have heard go forth and are choked with care and riches and pleasures of this life and brings no fruit to perfection. They are choked. My friend, if you have a little garden at home and you grow some tomatoes and carrots and a little radishes and something like that, do you know something that you have to go and get the weeds out? You have to get the weeds out. They will choke the, the plants that you want for yourself because the, the, the tear, the, 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 the bad weeds, they grow a lot faster than your crop will. And it will suffocate, it will, uh, it, it will choke them and they will die. So this here is the word of God. By the way, the seed is the word of God. The seed is the word of God. Verse 8, and, all f and others fell on good ground and sprang up and bear fruit a hundred folds. And when they had said these things, he cried, He that has an ear, let him hear. Let him hear. I'll add a little bit of this. Let him hear what God has to say to you tonight. So the good ground. Is that a, a person that uh, uh, thinks that he don't have any sin and so on? No, it's just a normal person. Is that when he hears the word of God, he hears the word of God, that he has an ear and he listens like I did, not in boasting, I'm not saying this in boasting, but I have to say that when I heard that I wasn't fit for, he for, for heaven, I had a fear. There was a fear in me because I'll tell you why. I was raised a Roman Catholic and we believe that after death, you die and you go to purgatory. And there, in that little time while others are praying for you and paying for masses and so on, that will, it will deliver you into, go into heaven. There's no such a thing as purgatory in the Bible, my friend. It's heaven or hell. Heaven or hell. It's not everybody that are going to heaven. It's not everybody that are going to heaven. But I have to say tonight in this room, there is no reason why you, yourself, could be on your way to heaven before you leave this door if you're not saved. Remember the Lord Jesus Christ. He went about different places and he preached the gospel he preached the gospel and some followed some followed so the category of the people here tonight are the one the, are, are the uh, the ones that i fell on the wayside and some on the rock and some among the thorns and some on the good ground what do we really mean by the good ground the good ground is when you hear the word of God and you stop. You stop there and you say, what is this all about? We preach the gospel here every Sunday night, time after time after time. And also during the year, we have special gospel meeting. Is it to entertain people? No, it is not for entertain people. It's to tell them the danger of hell fire after this life. It is appointed on the man once to die, but after this, the judgment. 
Let's go to um, Numbers 21. Numbers 21. Reading at verse 5. Numbers 21 and verse 5. And the people spake against God and against Moses. Wherefore have ye brought us out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, neither is there any water. And our souls lo uh, lo loatheth for uh, this light bread. And the Lord sent fiery serpent amongst the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he, t he takes away the serpent from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, and set it upon a pole, and it shall come to pass that every one that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass, and put it upon a pole, and it came to pass that if a, that if a, serpent, that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld when he looked upon the serpent of brass, he lived. When he looked upon the serpent of brass, he lived. My friend, it wasn't just a look. It wasn't just a look. It was a look of acknowledgement that God, God had put that serpent there. That, and that for them, acknowledging that if they looked on the serpent, they would know that their, their sin would be gone. There was a purpose in the look. There was a purpose in the look. Turn to Gospel of John chapter 3. Verse 1, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that, that, that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, unto Nicodemus, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter, enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That's just which is born of... of that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. What is being born again? Being born again is born anew in your flesh that you're in, realizing why did the Lord Jesus Christ had to go to that cruel cross of Calvary? Why did he have to go? There's a lot of people that say, if I do good things, and if I'm a very good person, and when, um, when the time comes that God will look at that, and he will balance everything, and... I will be in heaven. My friend, why did the Lord Jesus Christ had to go to Calvary? He had to go to Calvary for the sin of the whole world. In the Old Testament, there was sacrifice made for sin. 
The sins were taken away for a little while. But the Lord Jesus Christ himself, he came and he laid down his life at Calvary. We read um, in, um, in Luke 33, uh, 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 it says, and when they led him to Calvary, there they crucified him. There's a reason why the Lord Jesus Christ had to go to Calvary. That's where he paid for the sin of the whole world. In mockery, we see him up there with a crown of thorns on the cross. The spittle of man running down his face. His face was beaten so badly that beyond recognition. Why? For you, my friend. It took... It took all the, the, the brutality that man could ever lay on him and his death to take away your sins. Sin are a serious thing. First King. You don't have to turn there. First King chapter 8, verse 46. There is no man that sinneth not. There is no man that sinneth not. Romans 3 and 23. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. In other words, Ezekiel 18 and 4. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Every one of us have sinned against the Holy God. Every one of us, there isn't one here tonight that can say that they haven't sinned. But I have to say that when the Lord Jesus Christ, when he died on that cross, the suffering that was exposed there he remembered this guy. He remembered me. And he says, Butch, this is all for you. And all I had to say, all I had to say, thank you for dying for me on the cruel cross of Calvary. John chapter 3 and verse 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. In the Old Testament, I'll tell you, the Old Testament in the Bible is about half of your Bible. The Old Testament is almost an image, an image of the New Testament. So we have here Moses when he lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. And we have the people that are coming when they get they got bit bitten, and they can look and know that if they, they they believe that by looking at the at the serpent that their sin would be forgiven, that they would not die. I look at it this way: that when the Lord Jesus Christ died on that cruel cross of Calvary. And I thanked him for dying for me. My sins, and immediate that second, my sins were forgiven. They were gone. And they're not just gone for a little while. Like in the Old Testament, the sacrifice of the animals they, they had to do. The Lord Jesus Christ had, came into this world to die once. Once and for all. And tonight... By simply believing in what he has done and accept what he has done. Don't forget the four categories of people in, 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 the, in the scriptures that I read. You are in one of those. Are you in the one that, number, number uh, verse uh, 8, 
that the cell the, the, the seed fell on the good ground? Or are you in the in, 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 in five? It fell on, on the wayside. It fell on the wayside. You could be one of those. You could be a very poor person today and uh, no jobs and uh, um, no education and, and so on. I give you the worst of a person that you can be in this world today. But if you do, like the, 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 the people in the time of Moses, you look upon that, that serpent or the Lord Jesus Christ has come. You can look upon him and he died for your sin. It's not that you have to be a goody goody person. It's that you have to humble yourself and look upon that cross. You know something? There was a real day. There was a real day that the Lord Jesus Christ died upon that cross. There were many people that were walking by. There were many people that saw him. His mother was there. Some, uh, uh, some other men were there. It really happened. Just not for writing it up and to sitting at home and reading it and no, my friend, it's so serious. It's so serious, the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. He died for you. The suffering that he received in your stead is beyond our understanding. It took it all, what he endured on that cross, to take away your sin. And tonight, it doesn't matter what character you're in. Good, medium, bad. You put them all together. And you look upon that cruel cross of Calvary. Don't take your eyes off it. Don't take your eyes off of it. And if you thank the very God of heaven for sending his son to die on the cross for you, to take away all your sin, that is being born again. That is salvation through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And my friend, salvation, once you have it, you can never, never lose it. It's forever. It's forever. I ask you this. What are you going to do with the Lord Jesus Christ tonight?